time appropriate greetings ladies and gentlemen this is sean mcbride your friendly graduate teaching assistant welcoming you to laboratory three this week i don't have particularly cool unix terminal based presentations for you but in its place i have something that i think is a lot better i have your baptism by fire in xv6 development by the end of lab today you will have added new functionality to the xv6 kernel you will have defined a new syscall by which you can exploit that new functionality and you're going to write a shell program that calls that syscall taken all together we're basically going to have this, this diagram here and this particular flow really exciting stuff and I think you're really really going to enjoy and feel empowered going through this lab I'm not going to talk too long today because really if you take a look at all this material this lab is long and there's a lot of content in here and I want you to spend a lot of time on this with your group generally the instructions aren't particularly complicated so for example if you go through and you skip all the reading and you go to the steps and you just copy the commands and then you just dump it into into the particular places that I instruct you to put the put the commands you can get through this pretty quick probably like I don't know 15 minutes but if you do that you're doing it wrong and you're not really gonna walk out of this lab understanding how XV6 works and that's really going to, to rob you in and your teammates of your future productivity so I want you to really focus going through all the content here I realize there's going to be a lot that's overwhelming and new just embrace the suck and push through as best you can so in the lab I'm going to have you enter quite a few Unix commands to be able to basically practice uh, using the Unix toolbox to investigate a large code base like these I've you I've been using a lot of these programs in and pipelines and things like that throughout the lab so far and I really want you to get in the habit of being able to do this for example file is probably something that might be new and we can combine that with you know sort and unique and come up with a, a pretty interesting way to basically break down the files in this project by a particular type so I want you to go through all this and if any of these like commands are unfamiliar to you remember we've got the man page and that's even true with xv6 commands all the xv6 commands are pretty close to what you have on on your your Linux environment so if you take a look at the the man page for on Linux you'll be able to get a, a rough idea granted some of the parameters and the return types are going to be a little bit different but remember everything we've been covering so far we've been covering man pages we've been covering covering unix tools all the stuff really is going to help you today and going forward something that that we're really going to move into that's more new is vs code and to this point i've been using uh vim quite a bit to the to the point that some students have asked me you know considering how much you use vim and how much i individually like vim why is the course requiring everyone to use vs code and in some of the in-class exercises we've started to have some of the collaboration and so that's definitely part right this this live share stuff it's pretty neat and that works well that's part another part is just having a graphical tool like visual studio code that offers some more advanced advanced development affordances such as being able to click through to definitions and declarations really can be helpful for some of these larger code bases so i, would, I just want to show that now first of all I've, I've done some modifications to this repository and i've included all the instructions in the lab guide for you to do the same it, here in this in this repo I have a dot VS code directory and this contains editor specific configuration for VS code notice that I've also added or excuse me I haven't but I will add 
um, this to my git ignore because it's generally bad form to check an editor specific configuration into a shared repository because well, even though we are mandating use of VS code because of the live share collaboration tooling in real projects, you can't really count on that. There, there are going to be weirdos like Gabe that want to use Emacs and we want to be able to allow them to express their, their weirdness in our project. So let's not check, check in all of our editor specific code. So now this is grayed out. We can see it's not going to be added, but let's take a look inside to see what we have here. Well, first we have C, C++ properties.json. And this is a file that configures our C, C++ extension. Remember, if we look over extensions, excuse mine, because I just have a ton. We're all using this Microsoft C, C++ extension, this thing. And so this C, C++ properties.json file basically configures that extension. And the most important thing here is up here at the top. So by default, uh, in a C project developing on a Unix operating system, when you have a, a pound include and you have a header file, there is a particular order uh, where uh, order by which the operating system looks for those files. And that's called the include path. And that includes um, certain directories such as user include, right? So we can see a bunch of header files and shared objects and whatnot in there, right? So that's cool because when we want to um, use a library, we can then install it using a tool like apt-get and, and then we have that on our system. We don't have to have that in our particular um, source directory, but that's, that's not the case here. So for XV6, we're implementing functions like fork and malloc and all these things. And they're functions that, that exist in, in libc or in the Linux kernel. And as such, there's a namespace collision in the include path and that ends up having some problems for us for the advanced tooling of VS Code, a feature called IntelliSense, because VS Code is a little unsure sometimes. Are you talking about um, the, the function defined inside of this directory, or are you talking about the, uh, the libc, the actual GNU libc library that is shipped as part of your Ubuntu operating system. And so we just want to clear up all that confusion. So here we're saying what's in our include path. It's just our workspace folder, right? So that's here and then here. And we're, we're using this to create a database here, which automatically gets, gets populated in these files. So that's, allowing IntelliSense to work just a little bit better. One other thing that I've done to, to make things work a little bit better in VS Code is in the settings.json file, I've added excludes for a bunch of files. So if you, if I do a ls, you can see we just have tons and tons of stuff in here, right? Lots and lots of files. It's pretty overwhelming to be honest. And so as much as possible, I suggest hiding files that aren't really relevant. I mean, you want all the headers, you want all the source files and everything that goes together to create the kernel and the user space programs for XV6. But uh, do you need the bugs report for the original um, MIT students that wrote this thing? I don't really think so. Do you need particular scripts that do uh, performance testing using an esoteric Bell Labs tool, we're not going to cover it, so why even see it? So rather than deleting these files, 
I you can you can hide them, and that's what I suggest here. So by adding this, you just end up having a much better signal to noise ratio in terms of these files. And that's just really important because normally you have a hierarchical organization via some sort of um, nested directory structure. But here for this XV6 repo, it's just, you know, headers, source files, Perl scripts, markdown, all this stuff, all in the single directory, like super shallow. So just follow my suggestion here and, that, and that'll be a little bit better. So now, you know, even after hiding all this, we still have quite a few files and it's of course going to take a little bit of time to get comfortable going through this. And if you haven't been in a large unfamiliar code base, you're probably going to be pretty uncomfortable. But you know, to be honest, this uh, code base is about a little over 10,000 lines of code and it includes quite a few document or quite, quite good um, in code documentation. So it's, really not that big. I mean, if you look at a modern, uh, even like front end JavaScript library, it's probably about the same size as this entire operating system. So getting comfortable being uncomfortable in, in a, in a good size code base is a really important software engineer skill. And, and I'm so glad that I'm going to, I'm going to be able to be here with you as you develop the chops for this sort of thing. And the key to that really is, you know, we have all these files, right? and you only have so much working cash in your brain, you can't possibly keep all this context together. So as much as possible, I identify the subset of, of functionality that you need to touch to accomplish your objective and try to just keep your horse blinders on for the other stuff as much as possible. I mean, of course you need some big systems context to understand how the things work and you're gonna you're gonna get that over time but remember like keep the horse blinders on don't feel like you have to know every single file in here but of course today you're gonna have a chance to just at least peek at all this stuff so that's most everything i i, I really don't want to go through and explain what all these files do because the lab guide does that pretty well but I do want to just give an example for some of the advanced IntelliSense features. So for example, if I were to open up, let's see here, let me look at a, a good option. So file.c here, okay. We've got a C source file. We have a number of functions and things. And I, I just want to show a couple of neat Visual Studio Code tools we've got. So first, we've got outline and here, like in this explorer, we've got a list of all the files in the outline. We have a, a list of all of the C language elements inside of that file. So it's kind of like a hierarchy of constructs. Like if you were to think of this file as like a directory, here's like the things inside of that directory, I guess. So we can navigate the file by clicking through these things, right? So VS Code has some comprehension of the C language and how the stuff works. And that's what we get through that C, C++ extension. If we hover over things, we get information here. So allocate a file structure, and we can see that comment here gets displayed. So anywhere that this file alloc function is called, we'll actually be able to see this, this comment, right? It's like a function level comment. We'll also see the parameters and the return type. And we can hover over other things and see all sorts of information. Really quite useful. So just the first thing is just hover, right? Hover to get some information. And beyond hover, often, you can hold down the control key on Mac. It might be the command key instead. And you can see my cursor change to this pointer, like uh, like a web pointer, like a hyperlink. And that's because now if I click on this, it will actually take me somewhere. That one's not super useful because I'm already in that allocation file alloc itself here but if I do like I don't know release 
I jump to where release is, right? And if I go to lock, I can see where lock is coming from. I can see it's a spin lock. If I want to see what that struct looks like, I can click on that and I can see all the members. So as your code's belunking through this, you can basically dive through control click all over the code base to see all sorts of really neat stuff. So that's that's really helpful for kind of seeing the context around a particular area where you're developing code and, and how things are interacting. Beyond just uh, hovering and control clicking, pretty much everything has a context menu. So if I, let me just switch to another file here. Let's go to ls. So here's exit. We can see the comments. As I said before, we can control, click, and see what that function looks like. I can back out by hitting the Alt left key. I can go forward with the Alt right arrow key. So it's kind of like a browser history. But this also has a, a context menu. So if I right click, I can see a number of options here. These three are really the most valuable. You can go to the definition, you can go to the declaration, you can go to references. So there are 224 references to exit. And so we have this menu over here. We can see everywhere that exit is called in our code base. So that's pretty useful for example if we're looking at a function and we're wondering how that function is being used um sure log right go to references that's that's pretty useful right um one other thing i i want to sh show here is if i go to like a uh, proc.h and proc.h also has a proc.c i can do alt O, and that basically shifts me between the header and the source file, which is something that you know happens all the time. Those things are related, semantically related. So that's just some high-level bits for how to use VS Code in a large code base like this. I um, am really excited that you're going to be able to go through this this lab guide, and that I've been able to help give you an orientation and I really look forward to your questions and how I can help you. All the instructional team is uh, standing by and we just want you to have a great experience learning operating systems and getting excited about system programming like us. Join the cult. All right. Goodbye.